Thanks so much. Okay, coming back to this. So the topic is assessment methods in B learning, and I call it B learning. It's one more way of calling what we generally call blended learning. Blended learning is called blended learning, B learning, capital B learning, B hyphen learning, many different ways it's written and named. So I have chosen small b and capital L learning and I'm going to spell it that way throughout. Blended learning is also called hybrid learning. It's a hybridization of one or two or more things together, right? Flexible learning, a lot of flexibility is allowed to the student, to the teacher, to the course designers and to lots of other things and that's why it's flexible and it's technology mediated, right? And it's web enhanced. The classroom is supported by, enhanced by technology and mixed mode. It's obvious, mixed mode, two or more modes are used to deliver education and that's why it's called mixed mode instruction also. My presentation comes like this. This is the structure. I'll very briefly talk about what's e-learning, what's b-learning, what's assessment. Of course, a lot has already been said during the previous session and that's why I'll not go into the details of that, but one or two things clear I'll make about that. Then why assessment, what's assessed, and then how is assessment different in B-learning? Uh, what are the types of assessment that are available to us when we are dealing in a B-learning environment? And finally, if time allows, we'll also look at a few challenges that B-learning throws at us and if there are any possible solutions, we'll discuss them. Let's move on. So the first point that I'd like to make is what's B-learning. This has already been made. I think the first speaker has gone at length to tell us what B-learning is. One thing that I'd like to just clarify at this point is B-learning is often mistaken for E-learning. They're completely different. E-learning is one of the modes of delivering learning. B-learning is neither classroom learning not online learning, but a combination of the two. Is that clear to you? All of you. I think now you are clear. So B learning is blended learning as the name indicates blended. Blended means there must be at least two things. No. One thing cannot be blended. Right? One cannot be blended. Two, three, four, any number of things can be blended. Like you go to a uh, fruit juice shop. Right? You ask for a blend. So what do they do? They put two or three kinds of fruit together and then they blend it the way they, you want. So you can ha you have a choice. So I want a combination of this fruit and this fruit. Similarly, learning also can happen that way. So you can choose. The teacher can choose. The course designer can choose. The policy maker can choose. And even the student can choose what he wants. So when there are multiple modes of learning, and if two or more are merged, combined, united, blended, right? Hybridize them, it becomes B-learning. There are a few conditions there. One of the conditions is this blending is not just haphazard, but it's very deliberate. It's done with some purpose. Just do things, do not just come together and become blended learning. So there is somebody applying his mind to it, thinking very carefully and asking himself, if I blend it this way, will it be more effective? more productive, more rewarding, more successful. So he'll ask himself these questions before blending them in a certain pattern, not just haphazard, zigzag, or crude way. Okay, so it is an integration of two things at least. What are the two things that are very prominently, very conspicuously blended? One is the face-to-face -face classroom mode of teaching where the teacher directly interacts with the students with eye contact, right? And other advantages of the brick and mortar classroom. And the second thing on the other side is online learning. Online learning is all the digital platforms that we have available today, thanks to technology, right? For instance, the technology that we are using today, right? We are using the Zoom application to deliver this presentation to you. The college has taken a license or has borrowed a license and using this platform to deliver something to you. And these two things, if combined, they'll become blended learning. A question, a quick question. Is this presentation that's happening now blended learning? Yes or no? You can type in the chat box. 
Yes or no? Right now, what the college is doing? Oh, many of you are saying yes, but not yet. Sorry, it's not. So this is only one medium that are we are using as of now. The medium that I am using is e-learning. E-learning is digital learning, online learning. So I am teaching you something online. So it has not become blended learning yet. This is a presentation on blended learning. But I'm going to try to make it blended learning also in course of time. I'll show you how and what I've done already and what I'm going to do. You will understand that a little later. So blended learning is a hybrid. I think you understood. So three things you have understood so far. One, it's a hybrid, a combination. Two, it's a deliberate. Somebody is doing it for a purpose. And three, it is for the purpose of making effective education delivery and also to motivate learning to support learning to ensure greater outcomes better outcomes clear if it's clear you can give me a thumbs up you know how to give a thumbs up there at the bottom if you have understood the definition of that the meaning of blended learning you can go to the bottom of the screen there is a way you can give a thumbs up sir right very good you are learning that that's good. Thank you so much. Let's move on. Right. Why are we learning? Are we not happy with what we are doing? Right. Is it because there is lockdown? Is it because government is asking me, my management asking me to take some classes and that's why I'm blending learning? No. As I already told you, it's not because of the lockdown alone. In fact, online learning blended learning all of them were just waiting at our doors maybe even if this lockdown had come not come in the next two years three years five years ten years it was supposed to it was about to happen it was i mean on its heels right all that i mean came like a blessing in disguise was that the lockdown the corona i mean we were confined to homes and we were looking around for alternative plat platforms alternative strategies and it was already ready there the opportunity before it knocked at the door we opened the door that's all right it was there anyway why blended learning in case we want improved outcomes we need blended learning somebody asks madam there is a problem with the weak students madam there is a problem with rural students madam there is a problem with somebody who is not coming to my class somebody who sits in the back of the class so there are problems if you think that these problems can be overcome you can do something to ensure that the problems that you have can be resolved then you need a different format and that's blended learning so blended learning must be must be aimed at improving the outcomes otherwise there is no use it's one more 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 that's all okay then there are various styles of learning i don't want to go into all those details but there are students who learn different ways some students learn the verbal way some learn the auditory way some learn the visual way some learn the kinesthetic and there are some seven styles of learning i think and there are all kinds of students in your class, any class, however small the class is. Even if you have 10 students, there are five different styles of learning. So in case you want to meet all of them, if you have a combination, right? Suppose you put all the kinds of fruit on the table, everybody likes a different fruit and then everybody eats one. It's like that. So you offer them a complete platter. Whatever suits whomever takes that. That's why the blended learning must have this quality also. Then strategic use of time. A teacher has only 50 minutes, 60 minutes. Now I've been given some 50 minutes for this class. In this 50 minutes, I have to achieve whatever I want to achieve. The classroom time in three times is not enough. There is examination pressure. Teachers are overloaded often. Lots of things, usually even administrative things, office things, and so much of paperwork these days. Everything the teacher has to do. So the classroom time cannot be multiplied it is 50 minutes 50 minutes is 50 minutes hard fact so if there is something that the teacher can do to multiply that time so time that's not directly available to me if i can exploit that is there a way blended learning makes that possible so i can multiply the time that's available to me by doing something and that is possible when i use blended learning and finally 
there are diverse needs of diverse people and then students interests their pace their place their path and all this needs extra effort and that's why blended learning shows us a way to resolve some of the problems that we have and makes learning easier and more effective okay i have a quick poll question for you uh, you cannot poll now but you can type your answer in the chat box the question is what do you think is the future of blended learning the answers are will be forgotten soon will stay beyond the lockdown will gradually gain strength soon be the most popular mode you can type your answer a b c d in the chat box very good wonderful wonderful thank you so much lots of answers many of you are answering d and i see some c's also wonderful thank you you need not write the answer you can just say a b etc some people have chosen two answers a and b b and d see you can stop now thank you so much thank you i think some 70 80 of you have already answered that makes my job easy now now let's come back to this question look at this we are talking about assessment today not about blended learning assessment in blended learning look at this question in a little more detail what's my question what do you think is the future of blended learning now suppose somebody had said will be forgotten soon a how many marks should i give him should i give him a zero or one or a full mark or whatever or suppose somebody had said will stay beyond lockdown or whatever answer you give should i give marks see there is a trick here actually i deliberately played this trick what is this trick the question is what do you think is the future there is no definite answer that so it's an opinion question i'm asking you for a poll i'm asking you for an opinion so if somebody thinks with all the knowledge that he has or with all the information that he has at his fingertips maybe he thinks do you think the question is do you think so i think that blended learning is just a passing phase in the next 2 3 months it's going to be forgotten nobody will remember it again there will be something else that's coming why should i mark him wrong is there anything wrong with that it says think maybe he has 100 reasons to substantiate in case i give him opportunity or he might have just taken it whatever okay somebody says we'll stay beyond lockdown why should i punish him now this itself is not what i want to tell you but i want to tell you look at the way you frame your questions much more carefully if you are a paper setter for your students for your university wherever i mean frame your questions very carefully if you prepare a key for instance the questions that you ask the key must be very carefully made the key cannot be ambiguous suppose i say okay the last question the last answer is the correct answer because i know for sure or i taught a textbook and the textbook said very clearly that blended learning is going to be the best form of learning and the most popular mode the text said that it said the text i taught the text and the text has that sentence tomorrow blended learning is going to rule the roost so because the text said should i give one mark to the last answer and zero to the others i cannot because i did not ask what does the text say i said what do you think maybe the author thought something else so this is where our concept of understanding assessment begins there is something more important about this question the question is suppose suppose one student writes this one student says sir the first to three answers that you have given are grammatically correct and the fourth answer that you have given is grammatically wrong soon be the most popular mode soon be what is that is it an order be the most popular mode why is it not beginning with the word will like the other sentences so your answer is grammatically wrong it should be will soon be the most popular mode i am an english teacher i have taught my students english i taught them some lesson but i framed a question which is a grammatical error should i give him more than one mark or at least one mark even if the answer is something else here yeah. so these are the kinds of situations that we need to face when we are assessing 
wherever in the physical classroom the same rule in the online classroom the same rule and even in the blended learning situations also the rule is the same questions must be framed very effectively answers must be chosen very unambiguously and evaluation must be very thoughtful careful and well judged okay so this is i mean i don't need to explain it to you the future is going to be i mean uh, ruled by blended learning blended learning has already become very popular and it's going to become much more popular and it's everybody knows this right okay then when it comes to assessment the question is what is to be assessed again i am talking about all platforms in the classroom physical face to face and in blended learning situations in online situations what is to be assessed what is assessment right there are a hundred questions that we need to answer in case we need to come to a proper answer to find out what's assessment right so it's not just a simple definition that i can give you who should assess should the teacher assess should the principal assess should a third party assess should an external agency assess and if the teacher the local teacher the teacher who taught you assesses what are the positive and negative aspects of that if somebody an outsider comes and assesses you is it good or bad who should be assessed a very important question tricky who should be assessed in 99% of the situations people usually say sir it is a student who needs to be assessed but my point is different why should the student be assessed the student has been taught he has learned something and he has gone and i think that his job is over maybe you have given him a certificate that's all but should the teacher also be assessed because it's a teacher suppose 70 students out of 100 in your class have failed who should be assessed if 70 students have failed is already the result but there must be somebody else responsible not the students themselves so there must be somebody else that somebody else could be the teacher so should the teacher should be assessed or the teacher is excellent the students are excellent everything is fine but perhaps the course is bad it's a badly designed course book so it is neither the teacher nor the students nor the classroom nor the technology that's used but the textbook the material the policy maker somebody is responsible so that person also should be assessed so assessment is not such a small thing we can so easily talk about in 40 minutes 50 minutes it needs a whole two year diploma right to understand right what should be assessed is it the teaching quality or the outcome at the end of the course the resources that are used the course material itself should the textbook be assessed why not it should be assessed no suppose the classroom furniture should it be assessed why not suppose there is a school or college somewhere where there is not even a blackboard i taught in colleges like that right for a very long time i taught in colleges where even blackboards were not there students degree college students have to sit on the floor ground right so what should be assessed right when to assess should it be at the end of the year the summative kind of assessment should it be very frequent should it be once every day should it be once every week should it be every minute every half a minute right how many times how frequently when during during the course at the beginning of the course at the end of the course all these questions also must be answered to understand what assessment is then most importantly the last two how to assess right what data to assess what kind of questions to ask what criteria to use right should it be objective type or the essay type should it be administered asynchronously or synchronously any other questions and most important of all the last one if you understand this perhaps you understand everything that i would like to tell you during this one hour the last question why to assess right is it essential at all or if it's essential okay everybody knows for hundreds and thousands of years perhaps we have been assessing even in the gurukulas also perhaps in the olden days gurus had examinations of their students and they certified them in their own way or and that has been continuing that assessment is taking whatever shape it is taking but why what do we do with that 
Suppose I know that there are 70 students in a class of 100 have failed. Okay, then what happens? After the test is over, what? What is the test for? Why? The simplest answer that people give me when I ask this question is, sir, we want to know whether the student has learned what he is expected to learn. But that is only the smallest part of a very complex thing. Assessment is not for that actually. Assessment is for knowing whether the objectives of the course have been realized or not. Whether the teacher has taught properly or not. Whether the course that is designed is pertinent to the needs of the students or not. Right? So these are lots of things that need to be assessed and not just the student's performance. Cost effectiveness of the product that we have chosen. How much have we spent on this class during the year? Right? If you go to a private college, they will always do this. So I have spent so much on this class. So much has been paid towards salary. So much has been paid towards infrastructure. So much has been spent on this, on this, on this, on this. But what is the outcome if I don't get at least 50% of the students scoring more than 80%, 90% and good marks, good grades, and then good uh, name they bring to the college. So this is wasted. So all these factors need to be taken into account when we consider offering assessment to students, classes, courses, etc. Let's do a very quick exercise. All of you are ready? Yeah, please be ready. So what do we have to do? Read this text and frame a question. So I'm going to just give you a text, a short paragraph, and you have to prepare a question. You can take two minutes, no problem. I'll wait for you. So you can take one or two minutes, and you have to type a question in the chat box. The text that's given to you, this is your textbook. This is what you taught. And the text says, Shamila went to the market. She bought some bread and butter. Then she bought a bottle of jam, a packet of tea, and some sugar. Then she went home to cook something to eat. Okay, now you can type the question. Okay, why did Shamla go to the market? One good question. Where did Shamla go? Kanda Sweta Swati. Right, some more questions, please. Yeah, it, Ayesha says, where did Shamla go? And now Shar says, why did Shamla, what did Shamla cook? Now Sheen. Okay, they are moving very fast. I'm not able to read all of them. Okay, why she bought only few things? Lavanya says, what did Shamala, where did Shamala go? What did Shamala do with what she bought? What do you think Shamala is going to cook? Well, that's a good question. Who went to the market? What did she buy from the market, Rachel? And what did she, what market, which market did she went? What did Shamala buy? Jaya Lakshmi. Very, very good. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Is it important to go to the market? All right. Okay. Nice. Marao. Agnes. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I'm stopping you. But let me see what exactly do I want that. I'm sure you all are making good questions. But maybe the purpose is slightly different. I'll explain it to you why I gave you this assignment. Right. Okay. Good, good, good. You can stop now. Thank you so much. Right. Let me see the first set of questions that you've given. These are some questions that you framed. So many of you, I think 90, 95% of you have given me these questions, this kind of questions. Where did she go? What did she buy? How many things did she buy? Why did she return home? A list of the non-count nouns, etc., etc. First of all, what subject teacher are you? If you are a maths teacher, for instance, Perhaps the third question is really good if you are teaching maybe a second class, third class students. How many things did she buy? The second class student starts counting sugar, tea, bread, etc. and writes answer. Excellent question. Okay. But if you are teaching, suppose you are an English teacher and you go to the second class, the same class, and then you give them the question, how many things did she buy? Okay. Right. And the student gives the answer, maybe, suppose, I don't know how I've not counted, suppose she says nine, N-I-N-E, you give mark, one mark, because that's the number of marks uh, allocated to that question, 
to give full marks to that. What purpose has your assessment served? Does it in any way prove that he has learned the, the student has learned English? Or I'll give you another a little more complex situation. Okay, there are two students in your class. One, suppose there are nine items, I have not counted. Suppose it's nine, and nine is the correct answer. One student writes N O N E instead of N I N E. The spelling is wrong, but the answer is correct. Some other student goes wrong with the number. He does not count nine, he is bad at counting, and he writes 11, E L E V E N, correct spelling. Wrong answer in correct spelling, right answer in bad spelling. Then whom do you give marks? If you are an English teacher. If you are a maths teacher, that's different. Suppose you are an English teacher and you are teaching them spelling. You are teaching spelling and you are teaching English, right? And you are dealing with maybe second class, third class students. So whom do you award full marks? Very complex, no? Right? It's not easy. Maybe somebody tells you, somebody gives you a key, there is a paper setter at the Usman University level or any other university level. They tell you, okay, if they write this answer, give so many marks. Sometimes the key behaves like this. Now, in such situations, it's not just framing the question. A few other factors need to be taken into account. The teacher, the assessor, the evaluator must have a very, very clear idea of what's being assessed, why is it being assessed, the previous questions that I showed you. Okay, maybe one or two of you consider, maybe I did not give you enough time, maybe, but still you did something good. Some of you had questions like this, slightly level higher. Did Shamala buy healthy food? What kind of food do you think she would prepare after returning home? Which part of India do you think she is from? Why do you think so? All that I know is only her name, Shamala. She bought some bread and butter. And the question is, which part of India do you think she is from? Do you think she is from? Right? So there are questions of a slightly higher level. This is I am talking about an English class now. So this text, the same text has been taught in a graduate class because there's a graduate college that's organizing it. And at the end of the text, the teacher has designed an assessment. And these are the kinds of questions the teacher has asked. You may immediately say, sir, where are the answers to these questions? The text does not give answers. Now, the teacher is not teaching the factual knowledge of the student, which is something that actually need not be tested, which is useless actually, even if for all the correct answers, if you know, but still you can't speak one good sentence in English. What happens at the recruitment? What happens to the employability, right? We all know today what's happening to all our students. Hundreds of students go out of the colleges and not even one of them is selected for any good position. This is a complaint of colleges, general complaint of colleges. Why is that happening? Because their communication skills are bad, their confidence levels are low, or their ability to construct sentences is terribly poor, and they cannot even introduce themselves in good sentences. So why is that happening? The problem is not only with the text, not only with the teacher, not only with the classroom situation or whatever, but most importantly, with the kind of assessment that we have. A student who is able to answer a question like this, in case I prepare a student to answer a question like this, will certainly be able to perform well even for the interview, whatever be the job, irrespective of the interview that he goes to. So we have to begin thinking in terms of making our assessment in all situations, this is not specific to blended learning, in all kinds of situations, how to make our assessment more effective. When I say more effective, what I mean? I mean these four things. What are the four things? Assessment must be valid. Valid means it must measure what it is supposed to measure. 
like for instance that question how many items did she buy it is supposed to measure english language but it is actually measuring mathematical knowledge knowledge of counting 1 2 3 4 4 so that's not valid that question is not valid it's a invalid question in an english examination right questions must be reliable what is reliability reliability means whoever values that paper whoever in whatever kind of circumstances that is assessed internally externally inter rater wise it must give the same result suppose there is an essay and if i value and i give seven marks and if somebody else values that paper and gives four marks there is a lot of disparity between my evaluation and somebody else's evaluation why has that happened because there is something wrong with the question something wrong with the evaluation pattern something wrong with the key that has been prepared or there is no key at all and everything relating to subjectivity of the assessor so a good assessment must not have any scope for such confusion it must be an absolutely reliable assessment so when you frame your question paper for your students keep this in mind so if i value my papers if somebody else values the paper or if i value the paper tomorrow or if i hold this test again after two days will my students score something similar right that is reliability then washback this is the most important in fact my entire focus today is going to be on this washback what do i learn from this test so typically suppose a teacher is talking to you in an informal situation and a teacher see there were questions in the previous session also sir my students are not doing well my students are terribly useless right they all have come from some background i don't know how they passed intermediate or whatever they have come here and they are eating my head here i don't know they cannot even speak one good sentence etc but these are the hundreds and thousands of complaints that we generally make about our students now the question is not what they are capable of today the question is what i am going to make with them what kind of effort i can put in to make them a little better shall i say oh these are useless they can't be taught and leave them or okay i'll make this little effort so that everybody will be one level higher what effort can i make is there a better way of doing that if i do this will my students perform better why are they not performing better right the previous speaker asked you to think so think of some solutions what can you do to make your lessons more effective so that learning really happens this can this is possible only when you start learning from the assignment assessment so when you give an assessment and if you learn from that right there out comes they have written answers what do you do with the answers usually 99 times sorry if i am using these numbers without any um, research uh, re, um, uh, source but i'm just telling you 99 percent of us what do we do we just i mean take a look at the papers some of us spend a little more time than others and then we evaluate the papers and we put them away that's all no? and we award marks to students we prepare those tab tabulate those marks and then we pass them fail them whatever forgot it's a student speed but my point is my job must actually begin after the test is done it should not end with that test is not the end of it test should be the beginning of it what should be the beginning once the test is done if i go through those papers for instance if i make all the kinds of mistakes my students have made if i make a list of them and next class if i focus on those mistakes how they can become better perhaps that's a greater advantage than just awarding the marks and forgetting it right why are they making these mistake why student is making the same mistake again right what improvement has he shown from the previous test so this kind of information that we get back feedback that we get back from the assessments is called washback so washback is one of the most important reasons why assessment is used without washback assessment is a waste of time and effort and energy never do that whatever kind of assessment you hold it must have 
some washback on you. I'm coming to something very practical next. Okay, practicability. And this you need not bother. Maybe your principal bothers. Maybe your management bothers, and the policy makers bother. Is the test such that it can easily be administered? Do we have physical space? Can students sit like this? Can students come like this? all those infrastructural, uh, logistical, resource-related things? Take care of the practicability. Now let's come to something more important. Right. I sent you a video assignment. I think when I sent the assignment to you in the first WhatsApp group, there were 256 people. It was full. Not even one slot was left. And by then the college has already started the second WhatsApp group. And there were about 70 or 80 people at that time, roughly. And after that, another 20, 30 people joined the second WhatsApp group. And I requested uh, Ms. Kameshwari, I think she, I asked her to send uh, the same assignment to you individually. Maybe at least some of you might have got, some of you might not have got. That's not the question. That's not the problem. So I sent it to about 300 people. Okay. 300 people, I sent your video assignment. An assignment is a form of an assessment. Assignment for assessment. Okay. I sent you an assignment. What happened? Exactly what I expected happened. I'm very happy. I'm very happy because out of the 300 people whom the assignment was sent, the video was sent, two people, one is Professor Jaya Lakshmi and one is Miss Pallavi Mopada. Two people answered that. Thank you very much. Not the two, the remaining 298 also. Why am I thanking you? Because we all have together established that we expect something similar from our students. Right? So when an assignment is sent to you, the students have not answered. Now, my question is, it's not a complaint against those who have not answered. I am taking wash back from this. See, I told you that a good evaluation must have these qualities. Validity, reliability, washback, and practical time. I'm talking about this now, washback. Okay, so what washback have I got from you? So the washback is that if I send a video that's one hour long, nobody will watch it for various reasons. They may not have time for that. They may not be interested in watching very long videos. The assignment may not be very interesting to them. And there can be a hundred other reasons. But the thing is that answers have not been sent. Now, tomorrow, I hold an assessment for my students. If they have not responded well, if they failed the examination, if they gave the wrong answers, now I must begin thinking about that. Why did it go wrong? So I knew that I would not get enough responses to my assignment. It was actually some kind of an experiment that I was doing. What was that experiment? So if a long video is sent to students with one question, which may not be very significantly relevant to them for the time being, perhaps nobody will answer that. There is neither any incentive there, nor there any punishment there. For instance, I could have said, okay, those who do not send the response will not be admitted to the webinar tomorrow. Perhaps a few more responses. Or all those who send the responses will be given a free textbook, some book, some gift. Some more responses would have come. I should have made the video a two-minute clip instead of the one-hour-long one. Maybe if I had made a two-minute clip, perhaps some more students would have participated. Like that, lots of other the possibilities are there, but this is the beginning of learning for me. So my washback from this assignment. So why did I send that to you? I wanted to assess your skills. What skills I wanted to assess? I wanted to assess assessment skills, right? How can I know them? The quantity of the response, the quality of the response, what kinds of responses you gave was proof of that. And what to do with such findings? This is the most important. The last one in bold. So what to do with such findings? So out of 300 people, only two people answered. What do I find from there? 
so the lesson that i learned from that is i must change my strategy all 300 students in my class are correct only one person has gone wrong who is that the teacher right so the remaining 298 students did not answer no they are not wrong it's the teacher that's wrong it's the assessment that's wrong it's the technique that's used that's wrong it's the strategy that's wrong right when i posted that video to you maybe i expected 10 responses not two but i thought maybe oh i might get some 10 responses so i wanted to show that to you so what care will you take to make changes to your strategy so that your assessment is more realistic more valid etc so assessment is done for all these reasons most importantly the four highlighted ones on the right side so to get by wash back to identify the training needs of the teachers sorry i am putting so much stress on this assessment should not be just to evaluate the students and give them ranks and marks and all that it's not for certifying them it is to know where am i lagging what kind of training do i need it what do i know what's validity do i know how to construct a question do i know how to evaluate that is the indirect benefit of my assessment that should be then so it also should help designing better courses and i think there is a mention made in the previous session about customizing our learning plans so blended learning offers one great advantage in the future to students by offering them a limitless freedom autonomy flexibility and lots of other things so when that happens or when that of course already has happened to some extent but in this scenario in this context how can we make assessment more useful from the wash back point of view okay so how is it different so these are a few things that we say uh, sorry yeah these are a few things that we say are the advantages of blended learning suppose somebody suppose somebody suggests that our classrooms must switch over to the blended learning pattern not because of that lockdown i told you already maybe tomorrow there is technology available and teachers are trained and some other things have happened and then we know that blended learning is much more Uh, effective and productive than the other forms of learning only classroom physical uh, brick and mortar learning or only online learning is not enough a blend of the two a judicious combination of the two works better suppose i have decided and then i want to offer blended learning to my students why do i do that because blended learning offers greater flexibility to the students what is the flexibility maybe the student can take part of it here part of it here part of it this way part of it that way and a student comes and tells me sir i can uh, do this course online and this course because it's tough for me i don't understand i need a teacher's help i'll come and attend and sit down in a class why not so the teacher can give i mean a system in future can give that kind of autonomy to the student maybe future high flex courses will come we'll talk about that if we have time okay so students have lots of choice personalization is possible lots of different kinds of assignments can be given self assessment is possible and most importantly in blended learning assessment can examine and evaluate the students ability to apply the knowledge that is learned if he has learned something in the class can he apply it outside can be easily tested in blended learning situations now the one point that i would like to make here is if these things are the components of blended learning my point of view is these things must be the components of blended learning assessment also let me repeat because this one point i would like to emphasize if blended learning offers flexibility to the student assessment in blended learning also should offer flexibility to the student if the student has multiple possible choices before him in a blended learning situation right whether it's the choice of subjects or the choice of courses the timings right for instance in a regular classroom the timings are decided by the college 
so from nine o'clock to four o'clock at the college hours, and then that's when education is given. Online course is not like that. Online course offers you freedom. You can sit in front of your system whenever you want, and most of it is asynchronous. That's why you can learn at your own pace. So there are two choices available to you: absolute freedom, absolute rigidity in terms of timings. We are taking one example: timings. Now my point is, even when you are administering assessment. Right, a test. Even that also must give the same kind of choice to the student. The student must be allowed to write the examination either online or in a physical classroom or a combination of both. Whatever suits him. If you have given him freedom in terms of learning, mode of learning, it must give him freedom in terms of assessment also. Without going too much into the detail, so let me move on. I think I have about another fifteen minutes. So types of assessment. Okay. So what are the various types of assessment? The most I think I don't need to explain them to you. A very vague reference was made to that already. Summative assessment, which usually comes at the end of a term, end of a year, and it happens after the learning is over. In my opinion, it has very little value. Why? If you are talking about washback. If you are talking about learning from your assessment, it offers very little because by the time the exam is taken, the students have already left. It's over. What do you do with the results? The results do not serve any purpose except awarding a certificate to the student. So, if something has to be done with the results of the assessment instead of summative assessment. You must go in for formative assessment. Formative assessment is a continuous thing. During, right from the day the student joins till the day student leaves you, there will be assessment all through. It monitors the progress that the student has made. It gives you constant washback, and it also helps you continuously redesign your course. It should, right? Otherwise, just intermediate examinations are again they, they are summative only. Suppose you hold one test every month and forget it. That's useless. So if you learn something from the assessments that happen in between, and not only just hold the examinations, but learn from those examinations and to tune, fine tune your education delivery, right? Classroom experience for your student, online experience for your student. If you can make some. Minor modifications, major modifications to that, depending on the situation and the need, then it becomes formative assessment. There is a third kind of assessment which is called diagnostic assessment, and which is used usually before learning happens, before a student joins a course, and it helps you identify the difficulties, the strengths and weaknesses of the students. Okay, right. Okay, now summative uh, assessment helps you. No, off learning. Off learning means what is the kind of learning that you have offered to the students? But formative assessment and in, to some extent diagnostic assessment also gives you ideas about further learning. That means learning. In case you want learning to improve, if you want the process, the pace of your students' learning, the quality of your students' learning experience, if you want that to improve. If you want that to improve, you need to go in for formative assessment and maybe some kind of. Okay, uh, sorry, somebody said something. Hello. Right. So then there are lots of different kinds of questions possible in assessment. I will very briefly in half a minute. I'll tell you that there are broadly speaking there are two kinds of. Questions that you can ask during assessment. One is lot, one is hot. Lot stands for low order thinking, very easy to pass, and high order thinking. I wish I could administer a test here to find out how many of you are comfortable using both kinds of tests in your class. We don't have time for that, but anyway, you can you can do your own research and find about low order thinking, high order thinking. Right, testing for. Low order thinking skills, high order thinking skills. Okay, then you can also frame a different 
a set of questions based on this categorization it's called five there are only four things but the uh, the anagram is five f i v e f stands for factual questions where did shamala go what did she buy factual question inferential question inferential question is the answer is not directly there but you ask why did she buy sugar right the answer is not there but the student has to infer and tell you vocabulary market for instance where market is a word there so suppose you ask the student how do you spell market if it's a local class, small class right if you as you go higher maybe for instance you are teaching graduate students you can ask them to a question like okay what are five synonyms for the word market or use the word market in a good valid grammatical sentence right uh, what are uh, a few alternative places other places where you can buy things from so and like that you can make it the level can be um, it should suit the level of your student right so that is vocabulary question experiential questions i showed you on the second slide after that exercise so the second set of questions why do you think she did this what do you think has happened right um, where do you think she is from so that kind of exp if you were in that situation what would you buy if you are accompanying shyamala what would you advise her to buy something like that so these are all experience your test whenever you are holding a test in your class see that there is a combination of all these kinds of questions unfortunately most of our examinations most right a large majority of our examinations test only factual things where did this happen why how did this happen when did this happen these are the kinds of questions but the moment we make them slightly higher order thinking level and then make them experiential inferential reflective right analytical synthetic the ones on the right side bloom's taxonomy perhaps you know so evaluative questions judgment questions so if you ask them perhaps it will be better your assessment is better okay now to coming towards the end of it so there are some tools available to you to blend your learning blend your learning in i mean part of the lesson is happening in the class part of the lesson is happening e learning way so that's blending so in case i mean i told you in the first slide that you do it with a purpose it just did not happen right not because of this corona so you do it with a purpose so this lesson can be best taught in the physical classroom right this paragraph can be explained online this concept is easy to help them understand if i use a video right this examination can be conducted because it's objective online synchronously or asynchronously whatever so if you put your mind to it and decide what works best in the situation given to you then you begin blending your learning so how much happens in the brick and mortar class the four walls of the classroom how much happens when the student is not in front of you not in the classroom situation so you can use all these platforms all these platforms are not blended learning platforms they are e learning platforms they are digital learning platforms so if you want to make your teaching blended learning you must use this and also the physical class or you must at least use two or three different modes of this when you use multiple modes only then it becomes blended learning all teaching online also is not blended learning what's happening today in telangana in india perhaps the world over is digital learning or e learning not blended learning blended learning is to begin after the lockdown is lifted maybe when classrooms are opened again there is a great demand from students and parents to open schools in many parts of the world so when schools and colleges are reopened when we go back to classes when we decide or when somebody decides what will happen in the class what will happen outside then blended learning begins i don't think any teacher is doing it now i tried doing it today with two or three situations i gave you an assignment today i don't have time to discuss that today i sent you a handout so that was some kind of right this kind of blended learning because i sent you the handout right flipped i sent you the text first i asked you to read that again i think i received two responses one from vindhya pushpa one from raghavendra 
Raghavendra, I think uh, his response related to the links that I sent and Vindhya Pushpa talked about the other. Anyway, so these two people responded to the two uh, assignments that I sent today. So in case, uh, in case you had responded to that, it would have made my job easier to establish and demonstrate what blended learning is. So otherwise, what is happening today is only online learning. Quickly, I think I have about five minutes maybe we can do this. I requested uh, in my assignment all of you to go to these two websites uh, in case uh, you all can uh, go to this first website, myquiz.org. Please open that. Quickly. What was the number? I forgot. Double four eight. One second, please. Double four eight four nine two. I'm sorry. Yeah, double four eight four nine two. Right. In case you are, you have this screen in front of you. All of you, please type. Right. What do you see there? So there is a uh, quiz and the answer questions will automatically start flowing and then you answer synchronously all students will have the questions at the same time appearing on their screens and all students will answer them together the answers will be instant the students will be told the results immediately the software will automatically announce the list of the people who have scored whatever marks in that uh, test that has been given to them etc 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 so what is this this da, da. is this is an online tool myquiz.org and this online tool what are you doing you are doing you are using it to hold a quiz competition for your students based on what you taught in them in the class yesterday no, no. So you are bending now. So you have taught something in the class, and because the students need not be there in front of you, even if they are in front of you, evaluating those papers is not easy, right? Suppose they all give you quiz answers, uh, it's it's not easy. So you are using an online. So that makes it blended learning. Right, quickly, very quickly, look at the second one. Add puzzle, I please uh, note down this K-E-L-K-I-B-E. -E. That's the entry code, class code. Please go to this website. Okay, type here, K-E-L-K-I-B. -E. Right, if you find class, Okay, the class is not open. Maybe I'll go. I need to log in. I think I'm sorry, I don't have time for that. But I've introduced you to some two ideas. Maybe you can try them. That's why I told you that in case you try them at home and come to the class, that will, that would have made my job easier. Uh, anyway, what you can do today is maybe you can go to this edpuzzle.com, which is again an online learning platform, which helps you beautifully build evaluation assessment around a video that either you create or you borrow from somebody. Suppose you find a good video on YouTube, you can download that and you can build an assessment based on that. Actually, maybe you can try this after going home. I'll open it for you. Maybe after this class is over, perhaps you can try that. And I have created a two minute, the same video that I sent you yesterday that whatever video i cut a short part of it a two minute part of it and on that two minute video i built some questions one audio question one text question one multi-choice question one note on that i built into that and then i have offered it to you and that's available to you on edpuzzle.com now so please try this after going home i'm sure there are hundreds of other resources there is a small list of this <coughs> sorry
so use any one of them and i am sure your classes will become much more livelier much more interesting and your b learning will start now and i am sure everything that you do will be more productive more result oriented and the students learning experiences will be much more satisfying and the realization of the objectives of the course can easily be done thank you very much and then in case uh, maybe last before i close i would like to just give you one small assignment and go at least this assignment please do it i want an assurance from every one of you that you will not sleep today without answering this assignment this is a very easy assignment what is this assignment every one of you after this session is over after you go home after you fresh maybe before you have your dinner after you have dinner whenever but before you sleep you must create a 2 minute video lesson 1 minute video lesson how do you do that you just take your own mobile phone switch on the camera go to the video mode and pause before that they see that there is enough light in front of you right and then speak about something you are very confident about it can be a lesson or anything at least and then you can speak to yourself you speak to the camera for about 2 minutes and your first lesson is ready in case you have not tried right shooting videos your first experience will be certainly enjoyable and those who have already done it you can certainly do one more lesson today a good lesson today and use that edpuzzle.com upload that and then you build some quiz into that a question into that some music into that an audio into that whatever and that 2 minute video that you have shot for yourself is going to be your first online lesson which will soon become a part of your blended learning part once your schools reopen and when you talk about that to your students in the class and ask them to go home and do that clear so take care and i think all that you need is just a mobile camera and good light and a good place in front inside your house create that a 2 minute video and i already shared my number with you everyone who has created a 2 minute video today if you think and if you want you can share it with me also if you think oh it's not worth showing to anybody you need not send it to me you can see it yourself again tomorrow improve that or if you think it's not good at all you don't want to share it with anybody you just delete it and forget it but every one of you there are i think about 300 people i mean listening to this all 300 of you must begin becoming online teachers today if you are an online teacher you also can become a blended learning teacher right thank you very much wish you all the best maybe in i don't think you have time to ask questions but in case you have any i don't mind taking them thank you very 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 much right thank so you. this is my email address in case you want to note it down perhaps lion nagaraju at gmail.com you can interact with me later also thank you